Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. While I have your attention, I'd like to ask that if you like what I'm doing, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. Following me and sharing me is really important because I'm a one-man shop with only one, no money at all for advertising or anything else. So social media is the way that I grow. So please follow me at SYL Tales on Twitter and every other social media known to man. I would appreciate your support via my um, website, SYLRanch.tv, and there's a link to that in my description box. Well, as anybody who knows who's been paying attention from a very long, Marvel Comics has gone completely insane. In an age when the entire comics industry is seeing record low sales and comic stores across the country are going out of business, you'd think that the comics publishers would be doing their damnedest to lure new comic customers into the stores. But unfortunately, throughout the entire comics industry, the inmates have been running the asylum for decades now. You see, When Stan Lee retired from Marvel and Julius Schwartz retired from DC, two of the largest contributors to comic books since the 1940s disappeared. And without their sound-headed leadership, the comics industry has floundered ever since. Now, as an aside, I know you may not know him very well, but um, Julius Schwartz over here, he was never that self-promotional, but he was doing the exact same things at DC that Stan Lee was doing at Marvel. And they both retired at about the same time, after which the entire comics industry went to hell and has never come back. So now, today, without these two, the comics industry is filled with nothing but hack frauds when they attempt Anything that is quote-unquote creative, well, they get the New Warriors. Now, the New Warriors is a group of all new characters created by Emmy-nominated writer Daniel Kibblesmith and artist Luciano Vecchio. And what, may you ask, was Daniel Kibbles and Bits nominated for? The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. Because that certainly would mean that you're obviously clear to write comic books. Now, who are these new characters, you may ask yourself? Well, there is a Screen Time, the least stupid character, even though he is a meme-obsessed super team. So what does that mean? I don't know. He's a meme-obsessed super teen whose brain became connected to the Internet after being exposed to his grandfather's experimental Internet gas. Okay, I was in IT for 40 years, right? There ain't no such thing as an internet gas, and there never will be. Um, you're connected to the internet via some medium, right? Either it is wireless, like you see on your home Wi-Fi at home, or over 5G, 4G, whatever you've got with your cell phone character, uh, carrier rather, and then via wires, whether it's a you know cable like copper wiring or uh, fiber optic wiring, you're still connected somehow. You're not connected with a, with a gas. I'm sorry, but whenever I hear that, an internet gas. <laughs> I know you have to play sort of fast and loose sometimes with the science, but that is so fast and loose it requires a level of stupidity that just, it's, I, anyway, <laughs> internet gas. Uh, this stupid hero can now see augmented reality. Okay. Augmented reality isn't something that's just sitting there. It is something that is superimposed over reality by a program. So, like, for example, the Pokemon Go. The Pokemon are not sitting there unseen somehow. They're being overlaid onto reality by a program, right? You don't get this otherwise. So you can't just see auto augmented reality. You have to have programs that overlay it for you. He's not going to just see the Pokemon standing there. You have to have the Pokemon Go program in order to see the Pokemon. Anyway, he can now see augmented re reality through his internet gas. And he has real-time maps. Yay, pretty much so do I. And can instantly Google any subject. Well, guess what? So can I. Does this make him effectively a genius? Well, he sure acts like it does. Well, if he's a genius, then I guess so am I. 
And here is what Daniel Kibblesenbits has to say about this stupid, stupid character. Quote, I wanted to have a teen characters who felt as now as the New Warriors did in 1990. The New Warriors have been zeitgeist characters from the beginning. You can get edgy skateboarding Night Thrasher in the 90s and reality TV team in the 2000s. And now in 2020, we have no, New Warriors who have never grown up without the Internet and one character who appears to be essentially living inside of it. And the word screen time is only ever used in a sort of restrictive sense. And because we're doing a story about teenage rebels. Oh, yeah, these are real rebels. A lot of the names about the teens fighting against the labels that are put on them. So with screen time, we liked the idea that he has infinite screen time. OK, well, that one's dumb. Uh, the next one's pretty dumb. Uh, B negative. That's a blood type, if you didn't know. B negative. Um, he is a living vampire exposed to Michael Morbius's blood as a child in a rogue but life-saving medical experiment. He still ages like a regular kid, but has all of the abilities of Morbius. He's also obsessed with all the music and attitude of classic long-lost decades like the 90s and the early 2000s. So I guess that makes him, what, listening to a lot of Spice Girls and Britney Spears? Anyway, the world is a vampire, and so am I, is a quote apparently that he says. So Daniel Kibbles and Bits has this to say about this stupid, stupid character. B negative is the goth kid. Really? I would never have guessed. When he was a baby, he got a rogue life-saving blood transfusion, we assume from Michael Mo Mo Morbius, and he now has a very similar look and very similar powers as a vampire. B negative ages like a regular person. Or does he? And he definitely drinks blood. Or does he? But designer artist Lucio, uh, Luciano v uh, Vecchio took brilliant inspiration from the 90s Spider-Man cartoon and gave B-negative the leech suckers that the animated version of Morbius had on his palms. Don't know anything about that. Never saw it. Okay. So those two are pretty dumb, especially the one with the internet gas. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, I'm too much into that field. I can't uh, say that with a safe space. Safe, well, safe space. I can't say that with a straight face. Speaking of safe spaces, now this is the one. This is the one that pretty much everybody on the internet has been talking about, and and I get it because I until I went to the Marvel website, I really, along with the rest of you, I thought this was a parody, but it's not. It's not parody. It's not satire. This is two real uh, c characters they put together: Snowflake and Safe Space. They are psychic twins. Quote: All twins are psychic, but we are psychic. Er. End quote. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Despite having seen this on Batwoman, you know, the modern Plan 9 from Outer Space, I didn't really know that twins were all that psychic. You know, I've heard that, but I, I, I've known a few twins that I wouldn't say were psychic. You know, if you're a twin, if you're a bunch of twins out there and you're psychic, let me know in the comments. I'm really interested to talk to you about how that works. But Snowflake, a cryokinetic, can materialize snowflake shaped shuriken projectiles for throwing. Snowflake is non-binary and insists on being called they, them. Well, good for them. Safe space can materialize <laughs> pink force fields, but he can't inhabit them himself. The reflex only works if he's protecting others. He can put other people in safe spaces. They're hyper aware of modern culture and optics, and they see their superheroics as, quote, a postmodern meditation on using violence to combat bullying. End quote. Okay, last I knew, guys, Thanos was not a bully. Superheroes don't fight bullies, they fight criminals and bigger threats. Moving on, here is what Daniel Kibbles and Bits had to say about these stupid, stupid characters. Quote, Snowflake and Safe Space are the twins, and their names are very similar to screen time. It's this idea that there are terms that get thrown around on the Internet that they don't see as derogatory. Then they're incredibly stupid. Going on with Kibbles and Bits, they take uh, those words and kind of wear them as badges of honor. 
Well, then they're incredibly stupid. Going on with kibbles and bits. Safe space is a big, burly, sort of stereotypical jock. That does not look like a jock to me. He can create force fields, but he can only trigger them if he's protecting someone else. Interesting that he'd use the word trigger. <laughs> he gets triggered and he creates a pink snow, uh, pink uh, force field. I don't make this crap up, they do. Going back to kibbles and bits, Snowflake is a non-binary and goes by the the, they, them, whatever the hell they, them, the, they, them want to be called, and has the power to generate individual crystallized snowflake-shaped shuriken. The snowflake in our culture right now are something fragile, and this is the character who's turning it into something sharp. Snowflake is the person who has the more offensive power, and safe space is the person who has the more defensive power. The idea is that they would mirror each other and complement each other. Yeah, whatever. Just look at him, man. Just look at him. Now, now they were the dumb ones, right? The ones who made you think that this has got to be some kind of parody, but this was the one that took the cake. Trailblazer. She's a regular kid scooped up into the world of teenage superheroing. Her name, uh, wait, her, 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 her magic backpack, her magic backpack is actually a pocket dimension, seemingly infinite space from which she can pull out useful random objects. It's not always under her control. She claims to get her power from God, but, quote, not the God you're thinking of. Look, I have nothing against people who are heavier. I have never actually in my life dated a woman who is a supermodel. Some of them have been heavier. I have no problem with that, but not as a superhero. <laughs> I mean, oh, whatever. So Daniel Kibbles and Bits has this to say about this stupid, stupid character. She's a uh, young, uh, she's a group home and foster uh, child. Yay, isn't that wonderful? They got some of that for diversity. Who is um, uh, uh, volunteering at a senior center. Good for her. When this mysterious threat shows up, a night thrasher runs to the rescue. And because she helps him, she ends up in the crosshairs of this new outlawed law. Now, I, I don't know for sure. I'm hearing that basically in the Marvel Universe, they're going to pass a law that says teenagers can't be vigilantes unless they have adult vigilantes who are mentoring them. And so that's what happens with this whole superhero group. Trailblazer doesn't that yet think of herself as a superhero yet. The Marvel Universe is a reflection of our own, a reflection, uh, and when a new law gets put in place, it affects people in unforeseen ways, end quote of Daniel Kibbles and DeBitz. So we have the whole team here. This is the entire team. Now, not only do these people not strike any fear into the heart of criminals and don't look like they could save the world from a rainy day, I do have to point out one thing about this way, the whole group shot, and that's Snowflake and Safe Space. Now, I have a sister, a um, few years younger than I am, and I don't recall that we ever embraced like this. I'm not sure that anybody who's, you know, a sister and brother do that. It looks kind of, um, well, incestuous. I don't know. You tell me if you think differently. Looks incestuous to me. Now, one thing, I uh, you know, you just got to point out, man. Here's where we've come. This is how far we've come. You know, 1960s, the Avengers. 2020s, the New Warriors. Which of these do you think is actually good at fighting crime? You know, I mean... This, by the way, is not a, a photograph. This is artwork that is done by the amazing, talented Alex Ross. You should go look at everything that he has ever drawn. He is amazing. But you tell me, man. We've gone from this in the 60s to this. You know, this was smart. This is stupid. So, just dumber, dumber than bricks. The inmates are running the asylum. 
And, you know, I just don't think that Thanos really cares about them. You know, if you put them as, oh, here's Thanos, let's, let's go get the new warriors. Thanos is going to use a flick of his finger. He will not need the Infinity Gauntlet. A flick of his finger, and each and every one of these people is going to be squashed like a bug. They're so stupid. And, you know, I was thinking last night when I was doing my, uh, my uh, Batwoman live stream review, which I always catch to that. It's very fun. When I was doing my bat stream, um, I, I thought, that's a good thing to call it, actually. I'm going to call it the bat stream from now on. Anyway, I was doing the bat stream, and I was thinking at that time, I did a little bit on this, and I thought, who's, you know, the, the best thing that I can think of that is, you know, like these idiots over here? And I thought at the time, okay, maybe it's the Legion of Substitute Heroes. Now, if you don't know these guys, you may not. The Legion of Superheroes is a super team that is a bunch of teenagers in the 31st century that uh, operate in the DC Universe. Now, in order to get into the Legion of Superheroes, you have to um, go through a tryout. You have to show what your powers do and show that how they would be useful in certain circumstances. And if you don't make the cut, a lot of times you go and you join the Legion of Substitute Heroes. The subs are made up of um, superheroes like Stone Boy, you know, a, a guy who can turn himself into stone. That's his whole power is he turns himself into stone. That's it. Um, you get superheroes like um, Porcupine Kid, you know, who can project sharp porcupine quills. Uh, you get uh, Chlorophyll Kid, who under certain circumstances can cause uh, certain types of plants to grow, but not in a very useful way. Um, you have the best one of the bunch, um, Infectious Lass. Infectious Lass can infect you with colds, flu, etc., all kinds of stuff. So that's the Legion of Substitute Heroes. But, and I thought to myself, I was thinking about it before I was doing this, and I thought, you know, actually, there's another DC group who would probably be even closer to the New Warriors, and that is the Inferior Five. The Inferior Five was an entirely satirical group. Um, they were, again, it's like the Avengers. They were done in the 60s. They were there. Basically, they were um, lampooning the Justice League. Their membership includes Merry Man, who is the guy who's kind of in the um, court jester outfit there. He's an abject coward. Awkward Man, the guy who sort of looks like a Batman costume in an awkward way, but he has super strength, but has um, and no uh, physical, uh, he has no real control over himself. He tends to smash things. It's like a bull in a china house, china shop. The blimp, the fat guy in the green, one guess as to what he does. White Feather, who is an archer but cannot shoot straight if anyone's looking at him. And then Dumb Bunny, 1960s man. We, this is, this is, she's just stupid. That, that really is um, the, the good super team to put up against these new warriors. The, the, these guys are essentially the same. Clearly, clearly, clearly. The inmates are running the asylum at both Marvel and DC. They are slitting their own throats. They need to fire everyone on their staffs and hire me as editor-in-chief. Now, I'm a DC guy. I'd really rather go over to them. And there are rumors that DC is basically one multi-book crossover from ceasing publication. Now, if that's the case, AT&T, uh, you guys own DC now, I know how to fix all of your problems. I know how to make the DC profitable again. You have to fire every single one of these ass clowns that you've got working for you. Hire me as your new editor-in-chief and suspend publication for 12 months. At the end of that time, I will have hired a team that can create and maintain an entire multi-book universe without screwing it up. Now one thing, we will have to cut loose the comics stores, but I will have DC's comics on the grocery stores impulse buy shelves right next to all those magazines because we will finally be aiming the co comics at the appropriate demographic, which is 12 year old boys. Now, that doesn't mean we'll be telling stupid stories, it means that we'll be telling good, entertaining stories with character development that leave out all of the nihilism, political correctness, and stupidity. If you hire anyone but me, to run a DC at and then you are signing the death warrant of DC, both in comics and in film. It is just as simple as that. I can save your ass. No one else can. Call me right now. 
And that is all that I have to say about that. I'd love to keep the conversation going, so please leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks, and I'll do my best to respond to you. So thanks for watching. That is all the time that we have today for this episode of Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.